Good morning, friends. I'd like to welcome each one of you to our devotional study today. It's a blessing to know that you have joined us. Uh, even just this past week, I received a couple of notes of encouragement from those who listen to our devotionals on a regular basis. And I want to thank you for that encouragement and blessing that you are to me. I hope that the opening of the Word of God each day is a blessing to you and that these studies would motivate you to get in the Word of God yourself and to read the Word and study. You know, it's a wonderful thing to have the Word of God in our language, but it really does us little to no good if we're not involved in opening up the Word of God and reading it, meditating upon it, studying it, and most importantly, applying what we learn to our lives. It's of little benefit to read if we are not applying it to our lives and allowing ourselves to become more like the Lord Jesus Christ. We're concluding our study in Genesis chapter 27 today. And in Genesis 27, I mentioned this is a transitional chapter where we transition between Isaac and Jacob. And this chapter shows neither one of them in a favorable light. Uh, it's a chapter of deception and it shows us the dangers of deception and as a matter of fact, as we come into verses 41 through 46 today, we see the result of the deception that Jacob used to deceive his father Isaac. So I want to read those verses, Genesis 27, beginning to read at verse 41. It says, And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, The days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then will I slay my brother Jacob. And these words of Esau, her elder son, were told to Rebekah, and she sent and called Jacob, her younger son, and said unto him, Behold, thy brother Esau, as touching thee, doth comfort himself, purposing to kill thee. Now therefore, my son, obey my voice. I encourage you to study that little phrase in this chapter. It was used even when they were trying to convince, uh, Rebekah was trying to convince Jacob to deceive and arise and flee to Laban, my brother, to Haran. And tarry there with him a few days until thy brother's fury turn away, until thy brother's anger turn away from thee, and he forget that which thou hast done to him. Then I will send and fetch thee from thence. Why should I be deprived also of you both in one day? And Rebekah said to Isaac, I am weary of my life because of the daughters of Heth. If Jacob take a wife of the daughters of Heth, such as these, which are of the daughters of the land, what good shall my life do me? So as we come into these verses, we see here the results of the deception. In verse 41, we're told that because of this deception, that Esau hates his brother Jacob and desires to murder him. Now, as I began to mention yesterday, Esau was not happy about missing out on the birthright blessing. He was a man that despised the birthright when it was not providing any blessing for him at the time. But then he changed his mind when blessing time came. You know, as we think about that by way of application, there are many in our world that are like Esau regarding the Lord Jesus Christ. They despise him. They do not want anything to do with him. But then when the end of life comes, when death comes knocking on their door and they realize that judgment is imminent, many times they think very differently. Now, I'm certainly not against uh, deathbed confessions, as it were. Uh, you know, certainly at the end of life is a better time to get right with God than not getting right at all. But yet at the same time, we should not presume that we would have that chance. We should not presume that we would not harden ourselves toward the things of God. The Bible says, For those who do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. And as we come into these verses here, we see that Esau's reaction to what Jacob did resulted in an evil plan to get revenge against his brother. As a matter of fact, Esau's plan was to murder Jacob. This teaches us and reminds us of the simple truth that when we allow hatred in our life and we allow it to go unchecked, 
It is just hard to say where that hatred will direct us to, where it will, where it will guide us to. Here, hatred unchecked grows into murderous plans. And you and I should not allow hatred to be in our hearts and in our lives. The Bible makes it very clear that we are to not allow the sun to go down upon our wrath. At the same time, we must understand that hatred never produces righteous deeds. Hatred motivates toward doing evil. And uh, we ought to hate evil, but we ought to not be involved in doing evil, and we ought not to be involved in hating. Again, the Bible reminds us here of not only Esau's hate, but also we see Rebekah's desire for Jacob in verses 42 through 46. Especially, uh, it tells us in verse 42 um, that the words of Esau, her older elder son, were told to Rebekah. So here we see that obviously Esau was a talker. Esau talked too much and was not careful about who heard him talk. And there are many people as well in our world today that have gotten in trouble over that exact same thing. They, they talk way too much. It's almost like they have verbal diarrhea, if we can put it that way, and they're not careful with whom they talk to. So somebody obviously heard Esau talking and reported the plan of Esau back to Rebekah. And this, uh, because of this, Rebekah became aware of Esau's plan to kill Jacob. And uh, so she desires here in verses 43 through 45, we see that Rebe Rebekah desires um, Esau, uh, Jacob rather, to flee from Esau. And she says that she wants him to go down to Laban, her brother in Haran, and to tarry there with him. Notice what she says in verse 44, a few days until thy brother's fury be over, uh, turn away. So we see here that Rebecca thought Jacob would only be gone for a short time, but what really happened is that he is gone for some 20 years and that he actually never sees his mother Rebecca again after he left to go to Uncle Laban's place. So we see that Rebecca reaped some heavy judgment for the deceit that she practices in this chapter as well. For as Jacob leaves to go to Laban's house, she has looked at her son for the last time. She will never see him again. And it's all because of the deceit and deception that she had in her heart and her desire to do that which she thought was best for her son in her time and in her way, once again reminding us of the danger of running ahead of God's plan or doing things contrary to God's plan. And then the excuse that she uses before Isaac to send him down there was she desired for him to have a proper wife. And certainly that's a good thing. We ought to desire for our children to have a proper mate as well and not to have that unequal yoke with somebody from the world. I would even encourage you to go a step further than that, not only to find somebody that is a Christian, but to find somebody that is of the same faith and the same beliefs that you are. Otherwise, there will be that constant conflict as to how children will be raised, what they will be taught, and things of that nature. But even in this desire for him to have a proper wife, um, even so, she is lying Um she was being deceitful here with Isaac as well because the real reason she wanted him to go was because she was fearful that Esau would kill him. And that's a reminder to us that when you start lying, you end up lying more and more um, to cover up the lies that have been told. And uh, that's the danger of lying. Not only is it a sin against God, but many times one lie leads to another lie, which leads to another lie, which leads to another lie. And the lie that she tells here, the deceit that she tells here, is certainly something that Isaac would relate to as far as this bride opportunity goes, for that is where he got Rebekah through the action of Abraham and his servant. And uh, so they send Jacob away. There's so many things, friends, that we can learn from this wonderful chapter, but we ought to learn that it's never right to practice deception. 
that that we need to be careful as far as our discernment goes. The Bible says that Isaac discerned Jacob not, and that we need to be careful of the things in our world that have the voice of Isaac, but the smell of Esau, as we looked at earlier this week. And we also need to be very careful that we not only do what God wants us to do, but we do it in God's timing and that we do it in God's way. Have a great day, friends.